Hello all you ladies and gentlemen, this is Ken with Ken's Creations, bringing you Silhouette Quick Tips number two. Last week I started a new series called Silhouette Quick Tips, which I am hoping is helping everyone get some little more information on their Silhouette Studio software. Last week I showed you how to import .svg files into your Silhouette Studio software. This week I'm going to show you how to import .ttf files into your software. What is a .ttf file you might ask? Great question. When I first got my software I had no idea what it was. People were talking about where do I get this .ttf file? Where do I get this .ttf file? I'm like what the heck are these .ttf files? And then finally someone said they're your font files. And I literally said why don't you guys just call them font files? Really? I know, right? Anyways, there are this fancy thing called .ttf files, which are true type fonts. So, there's your lesson today. Anyways, I'm going to show you my two favorite sites to get font files. I'm going to show you how to download those, install them into your software, and then just show you the basic font um, features in your Silhouette Studio software. So, relatively, hopefully, a short video. But you guys know I'm a talker, so maybe not. Who knows? All right, so let's go ahead and launch our Internet Explorer. I have two favorite sites and then what I call a backup site, just in case I can't find it. Probably the first site I always go to is www.defont.com. And then uh, my next favorite is www.fontspace.com. And if all else fails... My secret website is Google. I know. What did we do before Google? I mean, literally, Google, oh my gosh, Google has saved me so much. Anyways, my mind's just blown because I don't even know what my life was before Google. It was just nothing, I guess. So if I go to defont.com, they don't have it. I go to font space, they don't have it, or I just couldn't locate it. I'll just go to Google and I'll look it up. So for example, if I'm looking for the Zelda font, because I like that game, and just say Zelda font, it will bring up what they call a Triforce font. Might not say Zelda font, but when we go into it, you're going to see it looks a lot like Zelda. Oh my goodness. And so then you can download it. So Google is always my backup. All right, so back on to the font. When you're at Defont or even Font Space, it's going to give you a ton of different fonts you can go. You can obviously come up here into your search bar. So once again, I could look up Zelda, hit search, and it's going to bring up anything that looks like Zelda. Or you can just randomly go look at these different um, categories. So they have a fancy, foreign look, techno, bitmap, gothic, basic, script, dingbats, and holiday. All of these are uh, font files with the exception of Dingbats, which I guess is technically a font file, except for it's a little different, and I'll show you that in a little bit. However, let's say we want to go to one of my favorite, which is the cartoon file. It's going to bring up all these different files. So if we want to um, download one of these, so let's say Mickey, that's a popular font. So if I like this one, I say, oh, that's really cute, I can actually click on this. And what it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and bring up each and every single one of the letters and what it looks like. It's going to bring up the uppercase, the lowercase, the numbers, and any special characters it has. And then you can say, I like that. If you like that, you actually, all you have to do is hit download over here. And then on my computer, it just downloads it up here in this little arrow down here. Once it's done downloading it, I can actually just double click on it. And there's the mickey.ttf and the mini.ttf. So I can double click on it. There's my font and I can hit install font. Sometimes it will say problems may have been found with some of the fonts during validation. And that's just because it's a complicated font. It's okay to override this. I override them all the time and I've never had a problem. And then on my mini font, I'm going to install that one. I'll probably get the same warning again. 
All right, and so now I've installed both of those fonts. All right, so before we open my Silhouette software, there's one thing I want to show you. There is a division called Dingbats. Now, what are Dingbats? Um, how do I explain these? So Dingbats aren't letters, but they're more a whole bunch of little pictures. What's great about these is obviously you're not going to spell a word with it. However, um, these are great to do trace files on. They're great for vinyl. Um, so these are really, really good to have. So for example, here's a great one with a Wally -E in it. So if I was to bring up this robot font, and let's say I wanted to do a vinyl of this Wally, -E, I'll show you what's great about that. So let's go ahead and download that. We now know Wally -E is the letter L by this little cheat sheet. So if I download this, and I'm going to go ahead and, and install this Robots Dingbat and install this font. It's kind of like having a whole bunch of images loaded into your Silhouette software. So let's go ahead and load our Silhouette software. Now, as you see, when your Silhouette software loads, see where it says loading fonts? That's where it's loading the fonts. So when I bring up my Silhouette software, you're going to see that it comes with some preloaded fonts. It also, so mine will also come with some Apple fonts that came with my Apple computer. And then it will also come with the fonts that we just loaded. So you can either scroll through all of your fonts over here, or if you know the name, you can look it up. So if I want to look up the Mickey font, I can say Mickey, and there's my Mickey font. So once my Mickey's highlighted, I come over here to the left-hand side, and there's this little A over here. And then I can just type my name. So there's Ken's Creations. So once I've off-clicked it and then I can go back on, I can do a couple different things. I can underline it there by putting an underline. Some files will let you do bold or italic side or italic, excuse me. You can center your file. You can put it off to the left, right, or full. Now, this is more if you're writing multiple. For example, if I'm writing multiple, so I'm writing Ken it Ken is a lot of fun. And then I can actually center that. I can make it go to the left. I can make it go to the right. So you can do that. You can change your text size here by either going to the different text size or you can type in your own text size. So I could actually say I want to do 156.0 and it's going to change your text size. So 156.0, enter, and there's your different text size. The other options you have, let me go and get rid of this. The other options you have is character spacing. This is obviously how much spacing is in between your lettering. So if I bring that, as you can see, my lettering is getting close. I will do this a lot if I want to weld my letters. So if I'm doing a creation and I don't want all of these letters to be separate, I want it to be one cut, I will a lot of times do this and kind of scrunch them together. And then I will actually, like on this one here, I'll weld it. And see how it welded it? So now it's only one cut. I don't have to worry about cutting that multiple times. Okay, so that's one little trick. All right, let me go and get my spacing back to normal. The next thing is your line spacing. So line spacing, once again, is if you have multiple lines. Okay, so, and let's say you want to change your line spacing. So you want more spacing or you want less spacing. So you could actually do less spacing and then you could weld it that way so you have one cut. The other option you have here is something called kerning. Um, and you can turn kerning on or off. 
And kerning, to explain it the best, I brought up this picture. What kerning is, is it's all about a way of lining it up. So as you can see here, if you have letters with no kerning, see how the end of this A lines up with the top of this V? And on Washington, the end of this WA ends up with the bottom of the A. When you applied it, it lines it up more accurately. So that's all it is, is it basically is bringing the spacing more in line and it's going to be more, um, I guess it's more vertically symmetrical. So as you can see here, there's the spacing is just a little bit more symmetrical, I guess is the best way to describe it. So as you can see on the Ken's creation, when I up, when it's off versus on, to me it's not too much difference, but the spacing gets a little tighter. All right, so those are the basic concepts on your font. Now, if I wanted to go into here, as you can see, there's different on Ken's creations here. There, there's two two layers. So if I was to change the color right now on that and go black, it's just going to change the back here. So if I wanted to change that front, I would have to actually right click on that and release the compound path. And then we would want to ungroup it. And that's going to, see how it separates all those other little letters. So what that's going to do is you're going to be able to go to each one and change that and then change the back. Just like that. And then, of course, you can change your line colors. You can do all sorts of stuff like that. But um, you want to make sure you release that compound path. So those are the basic things on fonts. Uh, let me go and get rid of that. Let me go ahead and show you what I was talking about on the dingbat. So basically, what I like about the dingbat, um, I think it was called robots. So as I said on that, it's going to do pictures. See how it does pictures versus um, letters. So you have all these different pictures. So what's cool is let's say right there is R2D2. So if I want R2D2 or, oh, look at that's the guy from Short Circuit. How fun. This is a really good one. I'm glad I found it. Sorry, you guys. I just... And I got lost in this ding pad. Sometimes you can find some really cool different things here. So um, basically, um, sorry, I was just playing around there. So let's look at one of these. So R2D2, he's the letter V. So there he is. I'm going to blow him up. So now you have a really good, even though it was a font file, you have a really good R2D2. Now I can change him. I can color him. I can now make him. I mean, imagine that as a vinyl cutout. I mean, that's a perfect vinyl cutout. You can ask for a better vinyl cutout. You could ask, also go in here and release the compound path. Sorry, guys. I need to change the color on that first. And you can actually go in and change color in each individual thing by doing this too. So now that I've ungrouped that, I can go in here, just do little different colors in each little section. I mean, that's what's great about Dingbats is, is even though it's a font file, you have a whole picture you know, in there. And I mean, they have tons of them. If you go to here and you go to Dingbats and you go to TV movie, you have Mickey Mouse stuff. Look at this. Futurama, movie gallery. Look at all those logos you have. Star Wars. I mean, you have some very, very cool, even though they're font files, some really cool graphics that you can do some pretty good tracing on and do all sorts of stuff with. So, dingbats are very cool.
So, uh, that's pretty much it. Font files are pretty easy. There is some more complicated things that you can do uh, as you get uh, more comfortable. One of those things is you can actually draw a circle. Once you draw a circle, you can actually then type a word. With that still in its box, see how it has this right here? We're going to move it around the circle, and you're going to see it. See how it did that? It went along the circle. And then, using this here, you can change your spacing. And then you can come down here, do character spacing. So this is great to arch your words. So for example, on bigger words, let's say I want to do, let me start over and show you on a bigger one. So let's draw a nice big circle here, kind of oblong here. And let's say I'm doing a happy birthday card. So before I release anything, I don't want to click anywhere. See this little thing right here? I want to move that with it and just come and drag it into the circle and it will automatically turn to it. See how it just automatically boom. It will actually, as you move it around, it will either go on the outside, it will go on the inside, on the corner there. There you go. So like happy birthday there. And then I can actually change my spacing to make it a tighter. So like, for example, let's say I want to weld those letters. There we go. And then weld. So it's nice one cut. And now let's say I'm ready to cut, but I don't want to cut this circle. I just want to cut my letters. See how the circle is not going to cut? Just the happy birthday is. So that gives you a nice arched See how that's a nice arched way of doing arch letters. So that's one nice little trick too. All right, guys, that's all I got for you on Silhouette Studio software and um, true type font files. I hope that gave you some more um, ideas you didn't know about fonts. And I look forward to doing some more uh, Silhouette Studio quick tips. And if you guys have any ideas or if you want to know any tips that you might not know, please send me an email. Make sure you're following my blog at www.creativeken.blogspot.com. That's Creative Ken with K's. Isn't that cute? That's so cute. I know. And make sure you're watching all my YouTube videos. Please share. Please like. I just love having you guys. You guys are the best best followers. Thank you so much. I adore doing this. You guys are the best. God bless you. All right. Thanks, guys.